really glad to see all of you here tonight. I'm Dr. Carpenter, and I have a lot of great information I'm gonna share with you. I don't care if you're a patient of mine or not. This information is so helpful. I really want you to know it. It's truly life-changing when you really kind of get the big picture of what we're gonna talk about tonight. And before we jump into all of this thyroid stuff, I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about me and what I do. I help chronically ill people find the root cause of why they're struggling so that they can really heal themselves and get their lives back. I look at things differently from most people. I blend chiropractic, functional medicine, functional neurology, and nutrition. So it's a really big picture because we're pretty complex and you kind of have to look at it with a big lens. Here's what we're gonna to do tonight. The main thing is we're gonna ask, answer this question. If nothing's wrong with me, why do I feel so bad? That's a really common question people come to me with is, I feel like something's wrong, but everyone keeps saying I'm fine. Or worse, they say it's in my head and they wanna give me an antidepressant. We're gonna answer this. We're also gonna go through several other things. We're gonna talk about seven pathways that are important for thyroid function. We're gonna talk about what causes 90% of low thyroid. Next, we're gonna talk about two reasons you feel lousy. We're gonna go over why a thyroid problem isn't just a thyroid problem. This is huge. When you understand this, it's just gonna blow your mind. The next, I'm gonna talk about how I get results where other people don't always get results. And then we're gonna go over top three things that you need to know. So when you leave here, you've kinda of got these three things that are important that you can kind of go use in your life. Now, this is gonna sound a little blunt. But the truth is, if the care you've been getting up till now were working, you wouldn't be here, right? There's something else going on. And one of the things that's sort of stunning to realize is the conventional kind of model for care for thyroid is really based in the 1960s. Thyroid care has not only really changed in the last 50 years. Now I'm not saying the names of the medications haven't changed, but the concepts behind what do we do with thyroid? You know, basically you have a low thyroid or we have a high thyroid and that's the end of the story. That's how it's approached. But we actually know the thyroid is a little more complex than that and it's more far reaching than that. So what we're gonna go over tonight is a little bit more updated 2013 information of how we would assess the thyroid and what we would do to help support it and help you recover. One of the big recommendations I can make for you is to buy this book. This book is by Dr. Tatis Karazian. He's seen as sort of the father of functional endocrinology and he has come up with just amazing information and a much bigger viewpoint on thyroid and how complex it is and what you need to dig into to really help someone recover. I've been learning from him since 2006. He's one of my main teachers and I basically do whatever he does. Now we're gonna start talking about the pathways in a minute, but there are a couple of things I wanna go over before we really dive into those details. One of them is kind of a stunning piece of information. There are seven pathways that we're gonna talk about about thyroid, but only one of those pathways is helped by a prescription. One in seven, that's like 14%. So about 14% of the thyroid issues actually can be helped by a prescription and None of you in here has that problem. If you did, you'd be on Synthroid and you'd be feeling great and you'd be off doing something else and not listening to me. That means you have a problem with pathway two, three, four, five, six, or seven. If you just had one, pathway number one, you'd be fine on your prescription. So to put this in a little perspective about kind of how the thyroid works, so let's think about a light bulb in the ceiling. If the light goes out, you could just change the light bulb and maybe it would come back on. But the problem maybe isn't just at the light bulb. It could be from the wiring from this light switch or this light fixture to the switch. If there's a problem in the wiring, how would we know? We'd have to run tests to find out. Now maybe the problem isn't with the bulb and maybe it's not with the wiring, maybe it's at the switch. So again, we'd have to test, we'd find out if it's at the switch. It could also be at the breaker box it could be the transformer. So if it's one of those problems and you just come change the light bulb, you're not gonna get a light back on. The thyroid is the same way. You have to really assess, is the problem at the thyroid gland itself 
or is it somewhere else? And when we go through these seven pathways, you're going to understand a little bit more about where else could the problem be? Because you can get thyroid symptoms even though your thyroid gland is perfect. Now, before we jump into these seven pathways, I want to go over just a little bit of thyroid basics with you. The thyroid function really starts in the brain. There is a gland in the brain called the hypothalamus that makes a hormone called thyroid, well, TRH is what we call it, just for short. So that hormone goes to another gland in the brain called the pituitary. That secretes a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, which is what you're all familiar with because it's what's on your labs. TSH tells the thyroid to work. It's like the gas pedal that makes it make more hormone. When the thyroid makes hormone, it makes a little bit of T3, but mostly it's making T4. Now this is where things get a little surprising. It mostly makes T4, but T4 is inactive. It doesn't really do anything for your cells. T3 is the business end of this hormone. It's the active form. So T4, all this T4 has to get converted into T3. 60% of that conversion happens in your liver and 20% happens in your intestines, in your digestive system. So if you're thinking about this, you might start realizing my thyroid might be fine, but if my liver weren't working well, I could have low thyroid symptoms because I couldn't convert T4 to T3. How would you know if your liver's having problems? Well, you'd have to run the tests, which we would do. So that's just some basics to kind of help you think through this as we go through these pathways. Now, the very first pathway, this is the one I told you, can actually be helped by a prescription. If your thyroid kind of gets lazy, the pituitary gland is trying to ramp it up and get it to make more, it's making your, your TSH levels go up, that would be a high TSH on your labs, but the gland doesn't respond, in that case you really could have hormone replacement therapy with Synthroid or something, some prescription like that, you'd feel a lot better. Now there are some cases where with Hashimoto's you do actually need to have a replacement hormone because you've had enough destruction in your thyroid you can't make enough. So having replacement would help you in that case. This is the one, if you had just this one, you were on a prescription, you'd feel great and you wouldn't be struggling. Now the second one is hypothyroidism due to pituitary problems. We talked about that gland in your brain that secretes the TSH to tell the thyroid to work. In this case, the pituitary is not working. It can be caused by stress is the primary thing. And there are things we can do to help get the pituitary working better. And so you can make a difference in this, but of course a prescription won't do that. Now, the third pathway, this is under conversion. And we talked about that a second ago, about how T4 gets converted into T3. Most of that happens in the liver, some of it happens in the digestive system. This is the one in my practice that I see the most. Anyone else that you know had other ones, or the primary one, the number one, they would be feeling better because they're under prescription. If they don't feel better, they wind up in my office because I'm doing things differently. I'm gonna give them a different perspective. And this is what I see a lot of. So this means that your T4 is not getting converted into T3 and your T3 on your labs is low. And remember, T3 is the active form of the thyroid hormone. It's what actually talks to all of your cells and makes them work. This can be caused by liver problems, digestive problems. It can be adrenals, having too much cortisol output and inflammation also in your system will cause this. The fourth one is sort of the opposite. It's overconversion. You're getting too much T3 in your system. And the number one cause of this can be insulin resistance, but that's also linked to PCOS in women. And for this, you would have to fix your blood sugar to get this to resolve. The fifth one, something called thyroid binding globulin. If there's too much in the blood, then there's not enough free T3 available to actually get to the cells and do the work. This tends to be caused by birth control pills or high estrogen. So I see women having this more than anything else. Six is what we call thyroid resistance. And it's actually not a good lab test for this. You just sort of figure this out. 
what happens is the receptor sites on the cells for the thyroid hormone, they become resistant. They don't listen to the signals that the thyroid's giving it and it's just unresponsive. And that can be from inflammation, which we get inflammation from a lot of the foods we eat in our country these days, from having an infection, things like that. It's also caused by having too much T3. Now, the last one is Hashimoto's, and hopefully you've heard of that. It's been talked about a lot more lately. It is an autoimmune condition. In this situation, the immune system is deciding that the tissue in your thyroid is actually like a foreign invader. Your immune system is designed to protect you from things like viruses or bacteria. And in this case, your immune system's kind of gotten a little off and it's thinking that this gland and components in the gland are a problem that it needs to protect you from. So it attacks it and you lose tissue from the thyroid. So, Hashimoto's is something that, to answer this question, you really want to understand a little bit more about. Autoimmune conditions in general are really on the upswing, and Hashimoto's really causes 90% of the thyroid, the low thyroid we see in our country. It's not true of a lot of countries. Sometimes it's not enough iodine, things like that. But in the US, 90% of low thyroid is caused by Hashimoto's. Now, Big picture for autoimmune conditions. We mentioned that the immune system kind of gets a little off and it thinks some tissue in you is a foreign invader. The mechanism is the same no matter what the autoimmune condition is. And there are over a hundred of these autoimmune conditions. And you've heard of a lot of them. Rheumatoid arthritis is one, Sjodren's, some things like that that you've heard of. But then there are a lot that you, you know have heard of, don't even know that they're autoimmune. Lupus is one that people know about. The mechanism is always the same, but the name is based on the tissue that's being attacked. So we mentioned rheumatoid arthritis, RA. It's the tissue in these joints in your hands that get attacked. So it's the same mechanism. Your immune system's attacking you, but the name is based on what's getting attacked. With Hashimoto's, it's your thyroid. So one of the problems we have with Hashimoto's, we talked about sort of the old conventional 1960s model for Hashimoto's, most doctors don't run the markers in your labs to see if you have Hashimoto's for two reasons. One, often the insurance companies don't pay for the tests and doctors are usually reluctant to order tests that don't get paid for and God forbid you should pay for them. So that's one reason. Another reason is truly the standard of care is the same whether you have Hashimoto's or just low thyroid all they're going to do is give you a thyroid prescription. But if you've been listening, you're kind of going, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. In Hashimoto's, if the problem is your immune system, not your thyroid, why would a thyroid prescription be the answer to this? And shouldn't your doctor be talking to you about what will irritate your immune system and make it flare and make the destruction worse with this condition, with this disease? So in my thinking, you really want to talk about the immune system and how you get it to be calm and functioning well without attacking you. So that's the difference between the kind of old view and the newer functional medicine view. Now, let's see what else we want to go through. Let's go through this. One of the other issues that comes up in people getting really good care with thyroid has to do with the lab markers. This is, I kind of call this the dirty little secret about labs. The ranges that we use, they're really just a bell curve analysis of all the, the labs that the, the results are coming in with and who mostly gets tested. It's mostly sick people that get, in, they get tested. So the labs create these ranges and I call this a sick normal range. Okay, a bunch of sick people getting tested and they create this normal range. You have to be really, really sick to fall outside of this and get any attention. Instead, you could use what's called a functional range. And the functional range is a lot tighter. We generally use from one to three instead of 0.45 to 4.5. So if you have your labs handy, look now and look at your TSH and see where it falls. 
this is one of the big like wow things. If you happen to fall kind of in this 3 to 4.5 range or over here, this could explain if you're one of those people that, you know what, I feel awful, but they keep telling me my labs are normal and I can't get any help. This is one of the reasons. They want you to be way further outside before they give you any care. So this is a big aha moment for a lot of people and explains why people feel bad even though they have normal lab results. Now, one of the really big things that you need to know, and you probably should write this down, is your thyroid hormone affects every single cell in our bodies. It is the gas pedal that makes the cells run. If this system is not working right, it slows your whole body down. It will affect your brain, it will affect your heart, it affects your liver, it affects your gut, it affects your metabolism. Some of you may have had your gallbladder removed, and that could be part of why. So if you ask your doctor, well, why did I have my gallbladder out? And your doctor might say, well, you know, you're 30 now and you're getting kind of older. No, it's not. You're having other issues that are affecting other systems and other glands, and you start to struggle. You really want to look for the root causes of things. With thyroid, you could be having hair falling out like we're showing here. You could be having brain fog. You walk into a room and you can't remember why you're there or you're talking to somebody and then you can't remember what you're about to say. It could be that you're only having bowel movements every two to three days. That's not normal. So you eat and then your food sits in your gut and rots and putrefies. So how is that conducive to health? This can be in part due to a low thyroid. So hopefully from this, you're starting to see that a thyroid is a thyroid problem. It's not just about the thyroid anymore. All of these systems listed here are affected by low thyroid. So we're talking about bone metabolism, how your digestion works. We mentioned the gallbladder and the liver, hair falling out. Your brain chemistry is highly affected by this. How well you burn fat. Everyone knows if you're low thyroid, you have trouble losing weight because it slows your metabolism down. It even affects your heart. People don't really think about that, but a lot of people have like palpitations. I think you mentioned that you have palpitations. It actually affects your cholesterol levels. Constipation, we just went over that. Huge cause, because it slows your whole gut system down. It's actually involved in estrogen issues and breast cancer. It's also involved in insulin and glucose metabolism, and we're gonna go through that in a minute. But hopefully you're starting to see there's this huge web, and it's very intricate, and, and you have to sort of pay attention to the big picture, not just this one little marker on a lab. Now, one of the reasons I'm able to get results where some people just don't is I'm really looking at this big web we just talked about. It's a whole body approach. So when someone comes in and they work with me, we're looking at metabolic issues, functional neurology issues, we're looking at structural issues, even we even consider emotional issues. When someone comes in, in the first visit, we spend a lot of time together and we'll get labs beforehand. We sit down, kind of go over the case history, what's been going on in your life, what are the issues you're really dealing with, what have you tried, what works, what doesn't work. We go through the labs in detail from the functional medicine perspective with those tighter ranges that I showed you earlier for TSH. We have those ranges for every marker that we would pull on the labs. So we use what your labs say with what you're feeling to sort of design a plan of what's appropriate for you. And of course, everyone's individual. This is not a one size fits all thing. So I help you get a plan together that's right for you. And as I'm looking through these things in your situation, I'm thinking about these systems that I call deal breaker systems. If these systems don't work right, you're not gonna get better no matter what we do. So we wanna make sure that if you have an autoimmune condition, and now people are saying, you know, 70 to 90% 90, 90 is kind of what we're leaning towards with research is showing is the cause for low thyroid. So we wanna make sure if that's there, we take care of it. We wanna make sure your blood sugar is balanced. We wanna make sure that you don't have anemia because we want you to be getting enough oxygen that's fuel for your cells. If you don't have enough fuel, you're gonna be tired. You're not gonna work right. Your brain's not gonna work right. We also wanna look at your digestion and your liver and your adrenals. 
And again, how do we know? Well, we have to run the tests. So we really use testing to figure out where you are and then respond appropriately. Now, here's another thing that's kind of interesting about thyroid. We all know the symptoms of low thyroid. You get kind of cold, you can't really lose weight, you feel tired, things like that. Well, guess what mimics thyroid problems? Dysglycemia, which means a blood sugar problem. It covers high and low issues. So dysglycemia is an overall term for blood sugar issues. Blood sugar issues have the same symptoms in a lot of cases as low thyroid. So there are cases where I have someone will come in and their thyroid panel looks beautiful. They really are working well. There is not a problem in that system, but their blood sugar's off. So what I want you to do is look at these two lists and see if you fall in one of them. Does anyone look like the low thyroid or the low blood sugar situation? Yeah? Does anyone fall into this other list of the, the high blood sugar? <coughs> okay, so once we've gone through labs and we've considered all those deal breaker systems I just told you, we also, if you're autoimmune, we look at this wheel these are things we know can either trigger an autoimmune condition. You know, you may be healthy and fine, predisposed with some genes to have an autoimmune condition, but you don't have it. Any one of these things, if it happens with you, can trigger you and flip you into an autoimmune condition. If you do have one, if any one of these situations is happening with you, it can flare that condition. One of the hallmarks of an autoimmune condition is that you have flares and then calmer periods you know you'll do really well for a while and then you just kind of not do so well for a day a week a month that's a hallmark of an autoimmune condition and any one of those things could make that worse so we would methodically go through each one of these things food sensitivities are huge with autoimmune people including Hashimoto so you would really want to examine that we have two ways we do that. You either go through an elimination diet and just experience what it's like to be off those foods and what happens when you add them back in, or we run a very good test called a Cyrex Array 4 that tells you about food sensitivities. It's very accurate. Insulin resistance we just mentioned. Having blood sugar issues can really inflame an autoimmune condition, so you want to make sure your blood sugar is normal. Having infections can really mess people up too. So those are the top three that I have to look at and then the other ones that are on there are things that are not quite as common but we do go through them and make sure that people don't have those going on. So let's go through, these are the top three things that if you can leave here tonight and you can remember these, it's really gonna help you strategize your care and what you're gonna do differently from here on out because now you, you know this stuff. The first thing is, we've mentioned this before, Hashimoto's causes 90% of hypothyroidism in the U.S. So if you are low thyroid, you really want to get checked for Hashimoto's and then you want to handle that appropriately. And remember, what you're going to be offered with standard care is a thyroid prescription. Maybe you do need it, but you may not. But you do certainly need some help assessing your immune system. The next thing, prescriptions only help one of the seven pathways. So we said, if you had that one pathway, you would not be here listening to me because you would be on Synthroid and you would feel great. You wouldn't be researching and trying to learn and look for help. The last thing is, if, you're, if your thyroid is down, other systems are down too. We talked about all the different systems that are tied into the thyroid and it is such a big deal. If your thyroid doesn't work, other systems are going to follow suit. So those are the three pieces of information that I hope really kind of help you. Now the main thing I want you to leave here with tonight is just hope that there are things you can be doing. If you don't feel well, there's still a lot left to do. So let's see. One of the reasons I teach this class doesn't matter to me if you're a patient of mine or not and some of you may decide you want to come see me and that's great but even if you don't I care enough about you and your health to teach you this stuff and kind of to tell you the truth about some of these things that you might not normally hear about health is 
I think it's the number one thing. And part of what actually helped me figure that out, my godmother has an autoimmune condition. She's in a wheelchair from it. And she said something to me one time that really struck me. And you know, people ask you, well, what's the most important thing in life? Most people say, oh, it's family or it's love or relationships, something like that. And she said, no, it's health. Because if you don't have your health, you can't even enjoy your family. You can't enjoy your work. You can't really enjoy anything. So health is the most important thing. The biggest recommendation that I can make for you is find the functional medicine practitioner and go see them. Have them help you assess all these systems and get a good plan of action. I'm happy to do that for you, but there are plenty of people all over the country that can help you do this. Thanks again for being here.